Hey, Clever Polly here and I'm back with another tutorial for you guys. So a few months ago I did a tutorial on how to create this inflated logo effect and I got a lot of comments about some issues you guys were having. So in this video I'm going to show you a better way to do that and hopefully your problems will be solved. And let's get started. First of all you need an image like this, like a logo, whatever it is. You can download mine from the description and you can see I have these lines in the middle because I don't want the whole thing to inflate up there so that's going to be it. Just download the image and let's get started. Here we are in Blender, let's delete the light and the camera and we're gonna save the default cube. Let's hit tab on this, control plus, axe faces. Now hit tab and right click, set origin and geometry to origin. That's good, there we go. Now hit S and 5 to scale it up by 5. Now control A apply scale. Now we're gonna get our camera so that everything is looking good in the camera because after simulating that we cannot really change much there. Add a camera here and I'm going to hit Alt R on this and bring it up here. So I'm going to hit G and double Z to just bring it back. That is what I want. Now hit Tab, Scale X axis and make sure it just fills the camera like that. Now we're going to hit Control R to give it a subdivision right here and then select everything, right click, subdivide. And just hit shift R again and again, then again. This much should be fine. Now we'll need our image. So let's go to geometry nodes first. And you're gonna create a new geometry node system on this plane. And after that, just go to your vertex groups and create a new vertex group. This is gonna be called the pin group. And now, let's get a store named attribute so we're basically converting that image that image data to a vertex group and then we're going to use that group as pinpoints in the cloud simulation so it's pretty simple you can just get the image texture here and open it up select the logo and open image and we also need uv's for that so that's very important first of all in the vector we're going to get a named attribute and set this as your UV map. Now with that done, I'm going to connect the color to the value. And in the name, we're going to choose our pin group right here. Make sure you don't just type it, just choose it from here and it will work. I'm going to control shift click on this and this one as well so we can see what is happening here. And the UVs are not correct as you can see here. Let's go to UV editor in here and I'm going to select the image. Let's hit tab and select everything Go to the Z-axis right here and you project from view. Now select everything here and scale it up. Now scale Y-axis so the faces are not stretched and it doesn't look like this. Just do it manually and it should be fine. I'm gonna go from repeat to clip right here. And also after this group input I'm gonna add in a subdivide mesh node and we're going to subdivide it once, and that's it. Then we'll see if it uh, doesn't look good, we're going to add more subdivisions. Now what you can also do is um, just mute this viewer node, and right here, hit 2, select this edge, then this edge right here, then this edge, and this one. Hit E and S to scale it up just like that. Then S, Y axis to just even it a little bit. I'm gonna hit 3, just select this whole loop around this thing and you can see the UVs for this is uh, right here. So I'm gonna select all of them with A and S to scale them by 0. And make sure they're on the black point right here. So they shouldn't be right there. And they are gonna be black now. You're gonna set the image texture from repeat to clip. I already did that once. I just hit tab again. Now hit Ctrl I, select all of them, so make sure the edge is not selected here and scale it down back to the normal scale. And this should be okay. Now right here I'm going to add in a subdivide mesh node so that we have more geometry to work with. And just like that, we've got it. I'm going to save the file. Once that's done, I'm just going to remove the viewer node. We don't need it and let's go to properties. So these were the nodes and as I told you it is pretty simplified in this tutorial. 
So it's gonna be easy. Let's go to the cloth and make sure your plane is selected. Click on cloth. And I'm gonna set the quality steps to three or four. And I'm gonna set the speed multiplier to 0.5 so that it's kind of slower. And then we are gonna go to the cache, set the end frame to 100. I'm gonna turn on this cache and let's go to shape and in the pin group you're going to select your pin and set the shrinking factor to negative 0.3 this works pretty well let's go to collisions and in the self collisions turn it on and i think i'm going to leave it like that now so this should be good to go oh we also need to add some pressure now go over here to pressure turn it on and set the pressure to 25 save your file and also let's go to the geometry nodes control shift click on this and then this again right here the black areas mean that the value is 0 and the white means 1 so we're basically telling the cloth simulation to pin the white areas but we don't want these areas to be pinned so we get a boolean math not and connect the boolean to the value control shift click on this and you can see we've inverted the values right there. Now, everything that is white is going to stay on its place while we're inflating the cloth. Just save it and remove this. Now we're going to try baking that. Let's just click bake. Now I'm going to give it some time to bake and I want to talk about my products real quick. So I have two add-ons and a course. First of all is the H2O droplet simulation which you can use for condensation effects and animated droplets. Which is pretty cool, you can check that out. And I also have uh, one add-on specifically made for product animation. And it's a tool for creating text animations like you just drag and drop the callout or the text you want and it will be animated already. You just have sliders and controls over every single thing. And I also have a brand new course which is about advanced 3D product animation. And you can see in the previews right here you're going to learn to do exactly these animations. So check these out and I think our bike is done. So let's see how it looks like. So I'm going to go back to frame 1 and play that. Oh, it's inverted. Well, sometimes that can happen, but it's not a big issue. You can just go to the pressure and set it to negative 25 and save it, bake it again. Let's play that. I think it looks awesome. Now, I'm also going to show you how to keep the logo color and the other cloth color different. And if you're still interested in this video, just keep watching and we're going to do some lighting and... I'm also going to show you how to make it look like the thumbnail. Right here, I'm going to keep this uh, a little bit low poly for this tutorial. If you want to make it look really good, you can just set this level to 2 if your computer can handle that. Just set it to 2 and bake, uh, delete the bake and bake it again. Let's go to the shading and for the materials, I'm going to select that mesh and you just click new material here. Then you get an image texture and keep in mind you have already set the UVs. So it's the same in geometry nodes. You have your UVs, just select your logo here and connect the color to the base color. Go to the material preview and there you go, you have it already. Let's get a color ramp and that is how you change the color of these things. So that's pretty cool, right? Let's just get some bump in here to make it look like fabric. Connect that to the normal, let's get a Veronoi texture. Connect the distance to the height and hit Ctrl T. We're gonna use UVs here as well. Remove the mapping. Now let's set the distance to 0 0.02. And I'm gonna invert this. Bring up the scale all the way here. That's fine, I guess. Now let's bring down the randomness, set it to 0 0.1 or something. That should be good. And that is looking good. Let's go to the environment tab and just bring that value to zero. We don't need that. And go to the rendered view. Now also, right here, set the engine to cycles, GPU compute, and this is gonna be 300. Let's just set the max samples to 300 here as well. Color management, I'm gonna set this to high contrast. Just few quick settings. Let's just get motion blur 0.25, render region. I always like to render in 30 FPS, RGB and 5% compression. Set your output as well. Just 
get a folder where you store the image sequence. And also, we need to do a little bit of compositing, but let's do it after the lighting. So, let's get a light. And you're gonna get spotlight, move it over here, and let's use nodes on this and set the power to 50,000. Let's get a noise texture, quick lighting. So, get the factor and get it greater than. Connect that to the color. Control T, select the normal, and connect it to the vector. Now, let's go to the rendered view. Bring up the noise scale a little bit. It should be fine and bring up the radius so that the shadows are smoother. Looking good. Now you need to add some lights all around here so that it, it doesn't look too black at some areas. I'm gonna get a point light, set it to 1000 and just move it around and place it at, but you need to remove use nodes on this point light. So it's a flat light and just duplicate it around your scene. There we go. That's the thing. I hope you like this video and you can check out my Patreon for this project file and you can buy my products if you're interested. It'll really help me make more of these tutorials. So that was it for today and I'll see you in the next one.